So hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my channel. Today here in the Philippines, we are now on our 8th week of the quarantine and I hope you guys are all safe and healthy at home. And today in this video, we are going to be reviewing again another watercolor brand. And this is the top grade watercolors from China's most popular paints manufacturing group. This is no other than the Mary's Masters watercolors. I believe these paints are rare because until now I can't find any other reviews about these and I cannot find also the exact same tubes in their websites. I don't know why. Maybe uh, you can help me with that. So um, while I can't find any other information about these paints, I think I'll just be basing as of the moment my verdict on these paints based on today's experiments and tests. So I'm really excited about this. Let's start. I got my paints last year, 2019, at the physical store of the oil paint store in Makati. And um, by the way, these are 9ml tubes and each tube costs 91 Philippine pesos or roughly less than 2 US dollars. Currently, the oil paint store has 19 colors and I got all those 19 colors. But when I googled, um, I found that there are more colors. I found 24 color set in AliExpress, but unfortunately, they are not available already. I don't know if it's because of the pandemic or they're out of stock. I, I'm not sure, but I'll be putting the links below in case you're interested. And you may also contact directly the Facebook account of the oil paint store if you're from the Philippines and if you are interested to getting your tubes. Currently, the oil paint store only sells this by individual tubes and they don't have a dedicated box for the 19 colors. They have a box that can fit three of the colors. So I just arranged their boxes in this way so that it will be presentable somehow. So now let's take a look at an individual tube. The tubes are made out of plastic. It looks aluminum, I know, but it's plastic. I can feel it. And in front, it says here watercolor. It has here the number code, the color name, ultramarine. It has four stars, which I think stands for the light fastness rating. And most of the colors have four stars. Some of them have three stars. I believe four stars is the highest in light fastness. It also has here PB29, so that's the pigment code for ultramarine. It says here masters and it says here 9 ml. At the back, there's where you can find their logo. I'm wondering why they had to place the logo at the back and not in front. And it says here, um, Shanghai BIIC Marie Painting Materials Co Limited. So that's their company name. And it says here, AP, so it conforms to the standards. So now let's compare the 9ml tubes to the other tubes of different capacities. So here we have a 37ml tube from Da Vinci, a 21ml tube from Sennelier, a 15ml tube from Mgram, a 12ml tube from My Mary Blue, 10ml tube from Van Gogh, the 9ml tube from Mary's Masters and finally a 5ml tube from Schmincke. And for our swatch sheet and sample painting, we are going to be using as usual our just 185 cold press column paper. And as you can see, I have put my tape here. It's my first time to tape and I'm excited about that. And for our swatches, we are going to be uh, dotting down first our uh, paints so that we'll be uh, doing this faster. So, let's start. So, as you can see, um, the consistency so far is good. There's no binder separation. Except for the cadmium yellow. It's leaking. So yellow ochre leaked big time here, so I'm cleaning it and luckily it's very liftable. 
So now I think we can start swatching. So let's begin with white. So this is PW6, so this is uh, titanium white. Next we have cadmium yellow hue. Now we have gumboge hue. These are both warm yellows and they look very similar. But the gumboge hue is the transparent yellow here. The cadmium yellow hue is semi-opaque. Next we have cadmium red deep hue. This red is very strong. This is spiral red. Next we have a alizarin crimson ER206. This is also very intense and uh, pigmented. Next we have brilliant purple which is PV23. So far the colors are really intense and they're very saturated. Next we have ultramarine. Next we have cobalt blue. I believe this is also hue because it's composed of three pigments. Because the real cobalt blue is PB28. Next we have Viridian which uses PG7 so this is Talo Green Blue Shade. Because the real Viridian is PG18. Next we have Thalo Green. So this uses PG36 so that means this is Thalo Green Yellow Shade. These two are really intense and translucent. Next we have another green. This is Sap Green which is composed of three pigments. And I love how natural this sap green looks like. It's very comparable to the sap green of Sennelier. Next we have yellow ochre. PY42. This is actually so far the most opaque color here. Next we have burnt sienna. And it's surprising that they have two pigments for burnt sienna. They have PR101 and PY42. But the color is beautiful. And it's also transparent. Next we have burnt umber that is also composed of two pigments. Here we have PBR7 and PY42. I'm wondering why they had to include PY42 in their rounds. But I think it's not dominant here because it doesn't show any um, traces of yellow. Next we have raw umber which is again composed of two pigments. PBR7 and PY42, the same combination um, with burnt umber, which is interesting. And this is opaque, and I think this time PY42 is at least um, equal with the amount of PBR7 in this color. Next, we have PR101 Indian Red. And I love this color. Um, this looks like Kaput Mortum. Next we have Indigo which is made out of PB29 and PB15 Thalo Blue and PBR7. It's interesting that they had three pigments here because usually Indigo is only composed of just two. Next we have Paints Grey, which is made out of PBK7 and PB29. And lastly we have Lamp Black. So now we are done, we can now have a closer look. 
So now let's proceed to our sample painting and as you can see I have now tape. I have taken some advices. So uh, let's see if this is gonna work for me. This is my first time to tape as I've said earlier. So I'm excited and I'm gonna be speeding this up to save time. So if you have questions, please just comment it below and I'll be answering you as soon as I can. So let's begin. So now let's go to the mountains and for the mountains I mixed cadmium red deep hue, viridian and ultramarine. So now let's have the trees and the plants that are closer and for that I mixed the same colors but I added uh, yellow. So now let's do the ground and for that I'm using yellow ochre with cadmium red. And um, to finish it, let me uh, use white for some highlights and maybe for some clouds. So let's also reflect these clouds on our water. We are done with our sample painting. And let's just wait for it to dry a bit. So now our sample painting is dry. We are now ready to remove our tape. And I believe this is very satisfying. So I'm really excited about this. And since this is my first time, so um, let's begin. And I hope the paints did not get under the tape. So I'm actually nervous. But let's hope for the best. Oh yeah, it's really satisfying. Okay, so I think I'm successful on my first attempt to tape my artwork. So here's a closer look. <laughs> but of course, this is not about taping. This is about Mary's Master's Watercolors. Before I give my final judgment on Mary's Master's Watercolors performance, let's first do our favorite part, which is the comparison portion. And let's begin with a set of paints that are, I think, less performing. Let's begin with Cymbaline watercolors. I think it's very obvious that the Cymbaline watercolors are very pale. And it's the same with Best Buy. Now when it comes to Sakurakoi, the Edge of Masters is the dispersion of colors. It's very obvious how some colors here stopped at a certain point. And it's even worse in Faber-Castell solid watercolors. When it comes to Reeves, I think the edge of the masters is the dispersion as well of the colors and also the behavior. Some colors um, in Reeves are weird like the violet and the crimson and also the lemon yellow. And also the Mary's masters um, earth colors are better as compared to the Reeves. When it comes to Pentel, I think the edge of Mary's is that the colors have more punch and also they provided the pigment code. The same with the Pebeo Studio and Faber Castell Troops and um, when it comes to Windsor Newton China I think the edge of the Marys is the more punchy colors and um, also with the Prang watercolors both 2007 and 2019 versions um, 
the dispersion of the colors in prang are more favorable i think but what matters for me more are the intensity of the pigments the punchiness of the colors and also the color selection i prefer a set that has you know at least three earth colors as compared to the prang sets which only has one and also they provided pigment co pigment codes and lastly the vrco art graph the vrco art graph gives me joy whenever i use it but i think um, the edge of masters is the transparency and the wider choice of colors so now let's proceed to the set of paints that are i think very very comparable to the mary's masters watercolors so let's begin with prima marketing tropicals i think they're very comparable visually and when it comes to the dispersion i think they're also very much the same next is superior watercolors i think the edge of superior is the dispersion while the edge of maris is that they provided the pigment code and the color selection but i think um they're very comparable so uh, next is winston newton cutman i think they're very comparable but if you are into transparency i think you should go for the cutman but if you want more punchy colors i think um, the Masters has the edge. Next is Lucas Aquarel. I think they're very comparable. Um, masters have more punchy colors. They are more intense. But I think um, the Lucas Aquarel overall has better dispersion. Next is Sonnet watercolors. I think they're very comparable in every aspect. And same is true with the Kokuyo Kamlin watercolors. But um, the edge of Masters is that they provided pigment code. But the edge of Kokuyo Kamlin is the dispersion. I think they're a notch higher when it comes to the movement. And lastly in this group is Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half pants. But if I had to specify an edge, I think Masters edge is the price. <laughs> but Overall, I think um, they're very comparable. The edge of Van Gogh is its dispersion. So, for the sets that are, I think, better as compared to Masters watercolors are, of course, the artist grade paints. So, let's start with White Knights. Obviously, the dispersion is almost perfect. The same with Mijello. Dispersion is very nice. Transparency is very nice. So, edge goes to it. Also, with Holbein watercolors, I think the colors have more appeal as compared to the Masters. The same with Paul Rubens. The dispersion is also very commendable. Also, with A. Gallo honey watercolors, the colors are more natural and they move also very smoothly. Of course, the Rembrandt Luxury Pocket Box. And also, the Winsor & Newton Professional. And finally, the Daniel Smith Watercolors. And I believe you have also seen in my previous reviews that I have done a review on the Mary's Watercolors in Pants and the Mary's Watercolors in Tubes that are, I think, student grade. And... Um, when you compare these three quickly, of course, the winner is the Masters Watercolors. And the second is the Set in Pans. And the third are the Marys in Tubes. Let me know in the comment section if you want a separate comparison of these three lines from Marys. I'd be happy to do that for you. So now, if you're gonna ask me would I recommend the Marys Masters Watercolors, my answer is a definite yes. If you have access to these paints, I think you should give it a try. I believe the price is very reasonable. It's very comparable to the Kamlin Kokuyo from India. I think these two paints are the cheapest artist grade paints available in the market. And I think the edge of Kokuyo Kamlin is that they have 20 ml. The edge of Masters is that they provided the pigment coat. So it's up to you to weigh your options and your preferences. My small complaint about this set is the absence of cool yellow, cool red, and cool blue, but I think it's not mainly the fault of the brand, but actually 
the issue of availability in my place so if you would like to uh, try this out maybe you can um, search for the 24 color set i believe the color selection there is more balanced than what's available here in the philippines as of the moment and when it comes to the dispersion of the paints i think it moved really well not the best but also not bad i think it's better than most of the cheap paints that i have reviewed earlier and the colors are very intense as you can see it's very obvious here and i really love the earth colors despite the fact that these three use two pigments i think it's okay because the colors that they added is ey42 which is also a reliable pigment so i can you know tolerate that and i love the fact that they included indian red the pr101 because i love that color so plus points for that and as you can see in my sample painting i think it worked really well i think the colors moved really well especially in my very light washes for the sky for the mountain and for the water part I think I'm happy overall with the performance of the Maris Masters watercolors. So, I think we're done. If you have questions, if you have clarifications, suggestions, comments, anything, please let me know. Please just drop your comments at the comment box and I'll be responding as soon as I can. I have all the time because we are still under quarantine and I hope you guys stay at home. Be safe, be healthy, and just do art. So again, thank you for watching and see you next week.